So we'll just take this. And the cool thing about this this thing here. Hey everybody, welcome back. This is my Socket 478 Pentium 4 motherboard. Uh, you've seen this in a video um, a number of years ago when I put together a Pentium 4 system. I believe it was a uh, thrift store find. Anyways, this is basically a motherboard from a Sony Bio something or other part number right there. But if you look it up, I believe Asus made this particular board. There's a couple different versions like this. It's tough to find this exact one, but um, basically it's from a Sony Bio desktop. And I've since replaced my Pentium 4's motherboard with a... I don't remember the model number. I'll put it up here somewhere if I look it up. Anyways, this has just been sitting on the shelf for a long time and uh, I haven't sold it or nothing because I really couldn't bring myself to try to sell something that I knew was um, on borrowed time. And why is it on borrowed time? Well, it's because these, I don't know if you can even, yeah, you can see. There's a handful of almost blown capacitors or blowing capacitors, bulged, terrible capacitors anyways. And I wanted to replace those. And well, there's a number of them on here. Uh, there's two here, there's two here. There's four here, and removing these with a regular soldering iron is a pain. So I just kind of like put it up on the shelf and forgot all about it. But um, I finally got around to getting one of these. Oh my gosh, you can't see it. Zoom up. There it is. Got me one of these. And um, it should be getting this thing apart. A lot easier so let's um let's open it up see what's in there i, I don't even know what's, i mean other than the gun I'm, I'm sure there's other cool stuff in there and um let's find out and then remove these capacitors and replace them with the ones that um i have on order that should have been here today already but they are not so hopefully they're here tomorrow and we can finish this video tomorrow um so yeah let's take a look so here. There we go. Let's see here. Instruction manual, carrying case, placement, I imagine, filters. We got some pokey guys, screwdriver, uh, I imagine that's a little, to clean out the tip, tip looks closed, I'm going to look at this instruction manual real quick, we got it preheated, I've set it to like 425. I feel like that's the right temperature. That's what I solder at. And I think we're ready to just start plucking some of these out of here. Well, that's probably the wrong word. But anyways, I feel like we're ready to remove a few of them. I've already taken the liberty of marking the back of the board with dots for all the capacitors that I want to remove. And hopefully this all just works well. So, it said to tin the end of it. Oh yeah, she definitely had enough of that. Place it over. Place it up for my grasp. I... I think that worked. I'm sure there's a learning curve to this. Let's see if that'll come out. Not yet.
The instructions did say to use a generous amount. Uh, there's already there's already some solder in there. I'm gonna monkey around with this and find out what the trick to it is. And I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. I got it out. Um, that was actually really, really simple. I think the trick was just to get some more solder, um, a better connection between the two. So like I filled the end of it up with a little bit of solder, plunked it down on top of it, hit the trigger and um, it cleaned right out. And then uh, another thing I think I didn't, um, the first time around, I, I don't think I pulled hard enough because like, um, as you can see, like it, it removed like all the solder from there and that's, that's a beautiful thing. So let me do the next one and maybe this time it'll work a hundred percent on camera. So this is what I did a second ago and I'm working around the camera. So it's a little bit difficult. Oh, I've seen some jumpies. And take it, wiggle it around a little bit. Whoops. And there we go. Oh my god, that was that was fantastic. Because <laughs> usually it's hard work to get those out. Oh, I love it. I love it. All right, let's do the rest. Well, I'm sure I'll get the hang of this, hopefully, because it worked so well, the last two. Okay, I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's like the right hand side or what, like if these are different sized holes or something like that, but like I moved on to the second one and it's doing the same thing. The left side comes clean and the right side does not. Hmm. I'm heating up my soldering iron now and maybe I can just kind of like heat it up and push it through. Find out a few. All right, well, these two haven't come out yet, but they, they look super clean. So let's just, let's just sally forth and, and keep going. See if these are any different. Yeah, see, it's a le the left one's loose. What the F? There's gotta be something to do with this motherboard because these two came out with like no problem. Let's um let's try these two. Yeah, see that one. That's how it's supposed to work. Why isn't the other one? Why aren't these working that way? Yeah, there we go. Beautiful. 
Why, uh... Why not over here? Okay, well, I mean, we've seen this work a few times. I'm gonna, I'm gonna mess around with these. I'll let you know how I do it. So I got that one out, and I don't know if it's a tighter fit hole or whatever, but it took. I was just heating it up and wiggling it from the bottom, and it, you know, it came out. Um, I don't think that's a fault of focus. I don't think it is fault of that or anything. Uh, I think it's just the design of the board. That's weird. So it took a bit of fighting, uh, no no fault of the tool, uh, to get you know all of the uh, capacitors out. But in the end, um, I think we won. Uh, the smaller side, I, I feel like it's a smaller side, it was really kind of a pain. Um, the side with the white um, on the uh, on the silk screen. But uh, all the rest of them came out really easily. I don't know why it gave me such a fight. Where were they? Over here. I don't know why the ones by the CPU gave me any kind of trouble. Anyways, um, I will see you tomorrow at some time when the new ones come in. And we'll have a fun time installing them. And this board worked before, so I'm, I'm not worried about it not working unless I've done something terribly catastrophic to ruin it. Um, if that's the case, we'll see if we can <laughs> fix it. All right, see you in a few. Well, all right, we're back. I finally got, finally got a package of resistors. Well, a few of them, because um, we have, if you remember, which um, we talked about it like two seconds ago in the video, um, we have 1800s, 1500s, and 520s. No, 820s that we had to replace on the board, and. So I thought it might be fun to get out the um, the multi-tester, the TC1. Uh, I got this on, I can't remember if it's eBay or Amazon, but this thing is fantastic. Um, of course, if you don't know what it is, it's for testing uh, various components and stuff like that um, to see if they're good or bad, or even if you don't know what they are, it'll, it'll identify them for you. So like, let's say, let's grab one of these and let's stick one of the, uh, the bulged 520s into it. Um, and test it up. All right. So we'll just take this. And the cool thing about this this thing here, <sighs> the cool thing about this tester here is it's so foolproof. Like you, it's really hard to screw up um, your test. So you just take, in this case, our 6.3 volt, 820. Microfarad cap, stick it into it. Uh, basically, I always just stick it in number one and then it doesn't really matter where it goes from there. But uh, I always kind of go right here, clamp it down. We're in there good. Turn it on. Testing. And there it is, it tests uh, 213.1. Uh, microfar microfarads and the ESR rating of 4.7 which is actually kind of high so let's take that out of there let's test it against one that is um, new Stick it in, clamp it down oh it shut down on me testing and there it is 827 uh, at 0.39 ESR so Definitely needed to replace um, those caps with the bulges on them. And honestly, some would say that you have to go through this entire board and replace all these caps. And the rest of them look good enough to me. Definitely going to be an improvement replacing these ones that are uh, physically um, bulged and damaged. Okay. So let's get this on there. So let's clip these off to begin with. At least make them smaller. We'll clean them up more tidy here in a minute.
This is just so there's less, um, basically, heat sink to soak up the heat. So I'm already not great at soldering, right? I never pretended to be, but having the camera in my face, in the way, makes me even worse. There we go. I think I'm gonna clean that up. I'll be right back. All right, and I finally got done soldering these on there, and I, I don't care to tell you how long it took me. Um. Well, that's not a great joint right there. Oh, great. Maybe I'll fix that. I don't know. The rest of them seem decent. Um, I, I have to uh, wonder how big the, um, what would it be, like a ground plane under there is. Maybe that's what's giving me um, trouble. Uh, taking away all my heat. Uh, anyways, the rest of them all came out pretty decent. Um, let's see if it Let's see if it boots up. All right, now for the moment you've all been waiting for. Um, this board used to work before I started messing with it. Uh, like I said, I, these, this is more just like a precautionary thing to uh, replace those bulging caps. But um, so, like I said, it, it completely worked before. So if it doesn't work now, it's my fault. So <laughs> let's see what happens. Where's the switch? There it is. Oh, we just jumped to life. Some beeps. There it is. Chassis fan is abnormal. Power fan is abnormal. Um, daytime not set. F2. Look at that. Not a whole lot else, but uh, anyways, it's uh, been sitting here running for a few minutes. Um, I understand that that's not enough to, like, uh, definitively say that I have not messed this thing up, but it's booted. So, really this video was uh, just to kind of play around with the Hacko FR, what is it, the FR301, right there. Um, and it worked great. And I'm sure there's some quirks. I'm sure I was uh, not doing it, you know, 100% efficiently. Efficiently? Efficiently. And um, those of you out there that don't want to be like, oh, you should have done it like this or like that or done this first and it would work a lot better, but uh, I'll, I'll get there. I'm, I'm learning. Um, it worked actually really, really well compared to what I'm used to, so that's a plus. Um, so I'll, overall, I'm really happy with it. I think it was a good purchase. It's going to come in clutch for a lot of projects, I think, down the line. Kind of a quick one, kind of just putzing around with it. Um, had a bit of fun. Hope you uh, enjoyed watching me. Um, what's the word suffer through soldering because uh, i'm not great at it but i do enjoy it so uh if you enjoyed it i appreciate a thumbs up and maybe a subscription if you haven't done so already and i will see you in the next one thanks very much for watching